can I ask what the subscript plus means for W and B plus? Sorry? Mm -hmm. Ah, B plus, yeah, okay, that's fine. I'm talking about um, sets of positive pi. So of course there's always going to be, I mean the empty set is a one ring set, and instead of waving my hands and saying, you don't really mean that, we're interested in only one ring sets of positive measure. And, uh, yeah. Okay, so that's conservative. So for example, if you had an equivalent probability that you preserved, then you couldn't have a wandering set. That's called the point array recurrence theorem. And when we have infinite measure, you don't have this particular point array recurrence theorem, so you need to, uh, it's not automatic, you need to consider a separate property. Okay, invariant set, that's going to be some set, measurable set, which is invariant here again, and we're going to talk about invariance up to measure zero. And ergodic is it irreducible in the sense that the invariant set is trivial. In other words, an invariant set either is measure zero or is complement is measure zero. Okay, so that's a good. So then we want to know the next thing we want is the ergodic theorem. So there was a lot of progress in infinite ergodic theory in the uh, early 30s. I mean, the, <coughs> we generalized the Birkhoff's ergodic theorem to infinite measure preserving transformations. And you get this ratio of ergodic theory. So the first thing is, you have a conservative ergodic measure preserving transformation. You take some P, which is a positive L1, non-negative L1 function, with integral 1. First thing is that the Birkhoff sums, these guys, tend off to infinity. However, the rate that they go off to infinity is the law of it. It's uh, what happens to Birkhoff's ergodic theorem with infinite measure. So that's maybe the, the, the bad news. The good news is that the rate that you go off to infinity does not depend on the function, but it may depend on the point. And now we've got some bad news that there are no normalizing constants. So whenever you have any constants and you choose these Birkhoff sums of this kind of reference function, then either the limb soup is going to be infinite or the limb inf is going to be zero almost true. And that would be by the ratio theorem for every, every function. So if you want constant normalizations, then we have to look at weaker senses. And so one of these is something uh, called weak rational ergodicity. Um, so there should be some normalizing constants, and there should be a dense hereditary ring. So ring means that it's closed under unions. Hereditary means that if you take subsets of sets that are in there, they're also, so it's closed downwards. And you want it to be dense, I mean, uh, without being dense, I mean, the collection of null sets be a hereditary ring. But we want it to be dense, so you can approximate every set from inside by something in the ring. And in that case, only two of these guys have intersections, and so if you have a hereditary ring with, a, with nice properties, then these properties would be invariant under isomorphism. Okay, so what do we want? We want that we, we take the measure of A intersection B to T minus KB should be normalized, and some of these guys should be normalized and uh, tend to the right thing for every set, for every two sets in the hereditary group. So this kind of property exists in infinite measure. The reason we have to talk about a hereditary ring, a special hereditary ring, another example of a hereditary ring would be all sets of finite measure. But this property will never be true in infinite measure with respect to all sets of finite measure. You have to take some sub, something like bounded measurable sets. Okay, so example, I mean, not every transformation has this property, but a Markov shift on a discrete space space uh, which has an irreducible recurrent stochastic matrix. So you sort of define it like that. You take all sequences of states, and uh, the map is the shift, and the measure is this Markov measure. And the measure of a cylinder, cylinder of A, all those points which kind of agree with the A coordinates starting with A. That's a cylinder. <coughs> okay, so in this example or in example, <coughs> 
is now you know, explicitly the hereditary way or just the Do I know it's explicitly the hereditary way? Good point. Uh, the hereditary, the, the precise characterization of the hereditary mm -hmm. ring probably would depend on the stochastic matrix. But it always includes cylinder sets. So if you, you, you could take the hereditary ring, take finite unions of cylinder sets and their measurable subsets, and that's a subgroup. So that would be like building measurable sets. Here. So there's some steps forward in infinite ergodic theory, and now we, we go a little bit further. Hopf did not do this rational ergodicity because he thought he could do mixing in this kind of case. And in fact, ever since Hopf's book in 1936, there is this question as to what mixing should be in infinite measure preserving transformations. So here's Hopf's example. So if you look at Hopf's book uh, in German, there's a translation into Russian. In fact, I think Mara Simon once wrote the translation into English, but it was never typed. But there are some notes, uh, Xerox notes or something, photographs that you can get. But anyway, what does he do? He has a transformation of the strip. Um, so it's a concatenation of two transformations. B is going to be the classical Baker's transformation, the natural extension of 2x mod 1 on each of these little boxes. And then after which you translate to sort of mix it up a bit. And um, that's the transformation. As you can see, it kind of looks like a, a Markov chain. And in fact, it is uh, isomorphic to the simple random walk of Z plus with reflecting barrier at zero. OK, so Hoff proof. Uh, this is, in fact, uh, this preserve, well, this preserves the Baker measure. It's ratio mix, it has a ratio mixing property that you take the measure of A intersect T minus AB, you divide it by root N, or multi so divide it by 1 over root N, or in fact, multiply it by this constant, and then you get convergence to the right thing, but only for, or not only for, you get it for Riemann integral sets. That's what Hoff proves. Rickyberg uh, showed that this was true, that, that T is isomorphic to this Markov shift. So in fact, this Markov shift is going to be as a Markov chain, it's irreducible and aperiodic, and uh, it's uh, weakly rationally ergodic, and the return sequence is the sum of the reciprocals of this the sum of what you divide. Uh, this kind of Luftwaffe, the, the Hoff proof, actually holds not only for this transformation, but for all Markov shifts with something called the strong ratio limit property, which is kind of like that. Uh, sort of underneath, <laughs> which you can't see. No, I can't. So underneath, I should say that Hoff conjectured in his book, what well, he didn't conjecture actually, he said, if, whoops, he said, if you could prove this Luftwaffe thing, but for every two bounded measurable sets, then he could prove that this guy was a god. So that's the, the, then he stopped, I mean, the, I think in the book, then he stopped talking about that one, that example, and then he the, the next chapters on geodesic flops. Um, okay. So what we know, we know that it's weakly rationally ergodic. In mm -hmm. fact, there was a proof from an Asimov of chain. Uh, I think Polya, Polya proved recurrence of the simple random walk or something on, on Z and, and also ergodicity. And this is essentially derived from the simple random walk. A similar argument will prove that this is ergodic, that this Markov chain is ergodic. So that could have been done in the 20s. OK, so that's the good news. Uh, now, some bad news. We had two steps forward, now we're going to take three steps backwards. So, we talked about a wandering set. Here's a weekly wandering set. A weekly wandering set is going to be some set, also a positive measure, which we probably, this probably should be a plus there as well, so that there's an infinite subsequence under which the translates are disjoint. And 
here again is a generalization of Poincaré, that if you have an absolutely continuous equivalent probability, then you can't have disjoint sets of uh, the same positive measure, right? Infinitely many. And so there would be no weekly one ring set if you had a transformation which preserved the probability. An equivalent probability. And in the 50s, Hadjian and Caputani proved that the converse to this, that if I have a transformation without an absolutely continuous invariant probability, then there exists a weakly wandering set of, probability, uh, of uh, positive measure. In fact, yeah, okay, here I should forget that. That should be a statement for a non singular transformation. If I took a non singular probability, or uh, an equivalent probability, then I could have the weakly wandering set of probability. <coughs> but what we need is that we have positive measure. And so this kills Luftwaffe for bounded measurable sets because. Go back to look about it. So if I took a weekly wandering set, then I mean uh, I would have an infinite subsequence where this was actually equal to zero, and so I wouldn't be able to tend to this uh, this limit. I wouldn't be able to tend to the correct limit. So there's the bad news. And here's the good news again. For the half example. It converges for all bounded measurable sets, but along sequence of density 1. So that's my result today. In fact, what I'm really going to do is to define a property that comes out of this result and indicate how you can prove that the Hopf example and other things have this property. So what does it say? For every two measurable sets, uh, bounded measurable sets, there is a sequence of density 1 depending on the two sets, probably, so that you have converted. In fact, it must be the two, the, the two sets. So this is kind of weakly mixing. This is a sort of a weak mixing condition. Um, there is this question as to whether, you know, it's, it, this is infinite measure, so you don't really know. It could be a mixing condition, but there's just been interfered with by the infiniteness of the measure. You know, I mean, things, things kind of naturally look funny you have uh, infinite measure. But in fact, there are sort of uh, more deterministic examples now with this property, so it really is a weak mixing property, in my opinion. Okay, so here's rationally weak mixing. Rationally weak mixing. So if you have some sets, it should be, first of all, it should be a got it. should be conservative a got it. Everything's conservative a got it. And there should be some set, positive finite measure, F is finite measure. So that if you look at the intersections A intersect T minus FB, you divide by these intrinsic normalizing constants or intrinsic weights, then you get convergence on some set of big density, but now it's U density, not density, not normal density, to the right thing for every two measurable subsets of your set. So this is kind of you're defining something. Uh, Define it, the, the definition is on F. Okay? F is a nice set if this happens for every two measurable subsets. And UF is the sequence of intrinsic weights defined this way. Okay? So what is, what's UF density? It's a generalization of density. So So it means that I tend to a limit SN tending U density to L if it tends away from a small set. And the small set is going to be in the sense of U density. So instead of looking at the number of elements up to N divided by N, I look at the sum of the U's up to N in the set divided by the total sum of the U's. So in certain cases, this corresponds to density. If I had u n would be a regularly varying sequence with index between minus bigger than minus one, less than zero. So, for example, one over root n would be like that. Then u density or u small u density would be the same for this uh, normal density. That's a kind of uh, exercise 
It's also an exercise that if I have gamma equals minus 1, it's not the same. Okay, so that's rational weakness. Why? Why is it called rational? Sorry? Why is it called rational? Ratios. Ah, of course, it's the only way to think about it. It's the natural way to think about it. Is that a comment at the bottom of the slide? It's okay, so you could have said ratio weakness. Sorry? Ratio weakness. Yeah, ratio is an <coughs> adjective. It's a noun. Russians and Americans. Maybe things will change. Maybe they already did. Yeah, right. So there's something at the bottom here, so that we get that. the rational weak mixing of Hobbes example with the idea that it's good for bounded measurable sets would imply this coffee cup. Coffee cup is the the version, the density version of Luther. <laughs> Well, that's about what, yeah, it's, now we've got a roof football. So. <laughs> this screen provides footballs. Okay. So implications. So we, we actually have another kind of weak mixing. I mean, uh, there's classical weak mixing for probability preserving transformations, which coincides with uh, rational weak mixing. It's, you know, if I had a, a finite measure preserving transformation, then rational weak mixing would be the same as weak mixing. But there's another kind of, I mean, this is the same thing as no eigenvalues, no L2 eigenvalues, or if you like, no L infinity eigenvalues. So all eigenvalues have constant absolute value if you had a converted transformation. And then we can talk about other weak mixing properties of non singular and specifically infinite measure preserving transformations, that there should be no eigenvalues. So I'm going to call that spectrally weak mixing. Spectrally weak mixing. So if you have a rationally weak mixing transformation, then of course it's weakly rationally ergodic. If you remember the definition of weakly rationally ergodic was sort of analogous to rational weak mixing, but I took sums. And so I can get it back from it. If I have if I have kind of convergence or density convergence, then I get kind of average convergence as well. So the point here is, what I'm trying to say here is the same, same hereditary ring. When I had weak rational with like this I defined this hereditary ring R of T. With rational weak mixing, I didn't say anything about hereditary rings, but I will get a set of nice Fs will be a hereditary ring. In fact, it's the same one. So apparently there is some kind of there is something that there is a question to identify these hereditary rings. So if I'm uh, isomorphic, so if one of them's, so if I have two isomorphic transformations, one is rationally weak in mixing, and so is the other one, and essentially the weights are the same. So I get the spectral weak mixing property follows from rational weak mixing. So spectral weak mixing, no eigenvalues or Carti equivalently. Cartesian products are ergodic for every ergodic probability preserving transformation. So that follows. And as an example now of uh, something which is weakly rationally ergodic, spectrally weak mixing, but not rationally weak mixing. Uh, in fact, there is a question of a Markov chain. This is a nice question about renewal sequences. Um, so if I do products with Probability, weakly mixing probability preserving transformations, then rational weak mixing is preserved as well. Okay, so when is somebody something rational weak mixing? There's this sort of topological rational mixing condition, which is generalizing the Hopf example introduced by Krigerberg in the 60s. So you say that a, a measure preserving transformation, I've got a measure preserving transformation now, and I've got some countable generating partition. And then we talk about alpha ratio mixing. If I have the ratio mixing property for cylinder sets. So there's some constants, un, measure of a intersection t minus n b divided by un tends to the right thing. For every a and b, alpha cylinder set. So there's the definition of an alpha cylinder set. Problem, it's a topological condition. It's not 
a measure theory condition, and possibly the UNs may depend on the partition. So you could have the same guy with two partitions with different UNs. Don't have any examples, but what we'd like to know if we <coughs> Okay, so here's the condition. So if we demand that we're going to be a weak in rationally ergodic mission preserving transformation, and you have a countable generating partition, but in the nice hereditary ring that's involved, and you have this convergence there, but in fact you don't really need this convergence, you just need new density convergence, then the conclusion in the footnote is that you're rationally weakly mixing. So then there's a way of kind of, if you have this U density convergence together with the fact that you have average convergence allows you to approximate. So you can, if you get, getting from this sort of cylinder sets, you can get to every, every measurable subset of uh, the cylinder sets. So these are examples. Uh, lots of examples have this property. Uh, so for example, Markov shifts with this strong, strong ratio limit property. So there's the strong ratio limit <coughs> property. So the renewal sequence defined on the state S, so this is the probability of being in state S at time N, given that you started in state S. So if you have this kind of thing that I mean uh, asymptotic, then it's going to be alpha ratio mixing, with alpha being the state, the partition generated by the state occupied at zero. So normal standard sets here. So Hock's example would uh, be like that. And in fact, there's an interesting problem on renewal sequences, because when you characterize rational, uh, rational weak mixing, so suppose we have an irreducible recurrent Markov shift. I think we also want aperiodic uh, and everything. So this is going to be rationally weakly mixing if and only if some, hence all renewal sequences, you have a smoothness property. So this is the smoothness property, like that. It uh, seems to be slightly less than the ratio limit property, but we don't know. And it seems to be slightly more than uh, aperiodicity, but we also don't know. There are lots of nice open problems about renewal sequences, and I'm happy to bring it up. So one way to get smoothness of a renewal sequence, you can get it using regular variation. So if I look at the sums, this is a result of Garcia lab 30. If I look at the partial sums of the uh, renewal sequence, and these are going to be regularly varying with index gamma strictly bigger than zero and strictly less than one, then u is smooth. And the reason is that so a renewal sequence is associated to a light bulb, and a light bulb has a lifetime distribution. And this lifetime distribution will be in the domain of attraction of a stable random variable with index gamma. And you'll have a local limit here for that. And from the local limit theorem, you get you get a curve condition which is stronger than smoothness. In fact, you can the renewal sequence is like alpha times a n divided by n along a sequence of density one. That's Garcia Lambert. This fails when gamma equals one, but then you can sort of do it via the lifetime distribution. It's going to come up as a footnote again, okay, isn't it? There we go. So if I look if so if I have n times the tail of the lifetime distribution. So f is the distribution of the light bulb. n times the tail divided by L of n. L of n is going to be the expectation of the truncation. So, so x is distributed like f. That's the lifetime of the light bulb. And ln is expectation of x minimum of So if this limb soup is less than 1 over root 5 plus 1, for example, when a n is regularly varying with big enough gamma, including 1, so if I have regularly varying with index 1, then 
this would tend to zero. So this, this result gives me, in fact, smoothness when gamma equals one. So it's, I mean, uh, it's still something to, you know, it's a new concept. We don't know exactly which things are smooth. I mean, like I said, maybe everything is, everything periodic is smooth. Maybe it's just a strong ratio limit property. <coughs> and in fact, no, we know it's not a strong ratio limit property. No, we don't. Sorry. Okay, so other examples. Uh, I said the fairy shift, so I call these kind of faint Markov shifts. So they're sort of they're isomorphic to some non-recurrent Markov shift, but with some Gibbs measure rather than uh, a straight Markov measure. So we, we say it's straight. So you have a weakly rationally equivalent <coughs> transformation, and you have a of n regularly varying with index gamma, gamma is strictly between 0 and 1. That's because I'm going to use this Garcia Lamperti local limit theorem trick. So we have a set, set uh, a nice set in the hereditary ring, measure 1 for normalization, we'll call it a local limit theorem set. Local limit theorem set is if there's a countable partition of omega, Countable partition of omega, so that if I look at the t omega, t sub omega is the induced transformation, the first three terms I map, so I, I, you know, I start in omega and then I travel around t x in omega, t omega x is t to the p x x, and p x is the minimum n bigger than 1, t to the n x is in omega. And this is going to be finite almost surely because of conservativity. So that's the kind of first return time map. And I'm looking at the sort of the first return time process there. So this is, should be phi. And then phi n of x, or yeah, phi n of x should be the sum This is the time of the nth return. So I'm just going up to the nth return here. And we want this uh, return time process to satisfy a local limit theorem. So what does that mean? I mean, the, the phi ends, the phi should be in the domain of attraction of a stable random variable with the order gamma. So this is the stable random variable of order gamma. Fz gamma is going to be its probability density function. And I want that the inverse function of an, so an is going to be something like n to the gamma. And this guy is going to be n to the 1 over gamma. And when I multiply by the probability that phi n is equal to kn, where kn is something like, uh, that should be a to the minus a to the minus n here instead of n. Uh, then I should be getting the density of x times the, uh, the product of the measures of sets. So this is a kind of a version of the De Moivre Laplace theorem for these first returns I run of variables. <coughs> and it happens for a lot of these fake Markov shifts. So that's a local limit theorem set. And so suitable fake Markov shifts. Nice towers of a Gibbs Markov, so some people know this as Young Towers. <coughs> or intermittent uh, interval maps. There's some references if you want, but I won't say what the references are here now. So in this situation, uh, your, your transformation is rationally weakly mixed. So the proof is essentially as in Garcia Lamperti. So like I said, if you're in that limit, local limit theorem situation, there's a kind of a renewal theoretic estimation that if I take any two measurable sets, so cylinder sets, yeah, then the lim in is bigger than or equal, the limit of the quotients is bigger than or equal to the right thing. That implies that the limit is equal to, because the sums, because I take the partial, sum, the partial sums of the numerator 
are asymptotic to this constant times the partial sums of the denominator, I will get that in fact there's a limit along density 1, and that, then I can start approximating. So that's the other. So it's some uh, modes of convergence, so to make to write down what I've just been telling you about the proofs. Uh, you have a, a sequence of weights, so what's this? It's a sort of a bound sequence of uh, no negative numbers, so that the partial sums turn up to infinity. And then we talk about, we tend to tend to something of a new density, so for some weight. If it's a new small set, then away from the new small, small set, you converge. A new small is the same as what we had before, the sums of the u's on the k up to n is much smaller than the, the total sum up to n of the u's. So had u equal to 1, it would be density 0. And we can talk about uh, strong Chisaro convergence, or u strong Chisaro convergence, and that this kind of thing. So if uk was equal to 1, then this would be normal strong Chisaro convergence. And then, of course, you can have, I mean, you can see that u, u strong Chisaro implies u density. The converse is going to be wrong, because I can, uh, you know, I can have something which converge, that converges u strong Chisaro and then take the small set and blow it up out of all proportion to wreck the averages, make it really big. But there is a smoothing lemma that, whoops, if I have a weight, and I have a sequence which is bounded below. And I know that the averages converge. And <laughs> and there's a u small set, so the if you want the u lin if is bigger than or equal to the to L. So this is I take the lin in from away from the small set. And this is bigger than L, then in fact I get strong Chisaro conversion. So that would be the, the converse of this result here. And that's how, in fact, that's how I was saying all the time that if I have limiting positive, the limit for the ratios is positive, and the partial sums of the numerator and the denominator are comparable, then I will get convergence along a big set. That's from this smoothie. So we have this concept of being good for the mean ergodic theorem. So I take a probability preserving transformation, and then I do the kind of weighted averages for these guys. So instead of summing and dividing by n, you sum, you multiply by the uk, and then divide by the sum of the, the u's. And then you should get convergence in L2. That's a definition. This was studied in the 40s quite a lot. So you know that if u is smooth, then it's MET. Why? Because uh, any kind of limits of these guys, weak limits of these guys will be invariant and therefore constant. So you get weak convergence, but in this situation, weak convergence will also imply strong convergence. Also, if you had something which was weakly rationally ergodic and spectrally weakly missing, then the intrinsic weight sequences would be mean ergodic. So now we know that there are guys like this which are not smooth. So, in fact, you know, there are examples where there were uh, things which were not smooth before mean ergodic. But now we know that we can do it with a, a measure preserving transformation. So there's a question now as to whether mean ergodic theorem implies smooth, not in general, but just for renewal sequence. So that's the question as to whether aperiodic is <coughs> uh, So, if I have a U which is mean ergodic theorem and I have a weakly mixing probability preserving translation, then in fact a rationally weak mixing for this, well, not rationally weak mixing, but I converge along U density away from U density zero to a mixing along a sequence of. 
away from the sequence of new densities here. So this kind of thing, you can prove those results that uh, you have something which is rationally weakly mixing, then you can product it with a, a weakly mixing probability preserving transformation and preserve it, and you can get ergodicity when you have an ergodic probability preserving transformation. Okay, so here's an example, the example which is weakly rationally ergodic and spectrally weak mixing, but not rationally weak mixing. It's a kind of a tower over the dyadic adding machine. This is something called the, let me should know this, this is the, called the Ohio State example. <laughs> um, I'm you, I mean, it's not exactly, I'm not, and I'm not exactly using this example, but because this example is not weakly mixing, this is a triadic adding machine. So here's the definition of T. So you, you look at the <coughs> of zeros and one symmetric probability measure, and then you have the adding machine, which is defined like that. So L is going to be the coordinate, the first coordinate, which is zero, and then you're kind of adding one to the first coordinate and carry uh, mod two, and carry to the right. So we're looking at, in fact, addition of one on the dyadic integers. So there's something called a growth sequence. So sequence, increasing sequence of natural numbers, Qn is bigger than, strictly bigger than the sum of all the previous guys. So the kind of minimal one would be 2 to the n. And then you can talk about a dynamic pulse cycle associated to the growth sequence. Q, phi of omega is QL of omega minus, so this is a function. And in fact, you can see that it's a symmetric pulse cycle in this set. So here's the definition. Q out of omega minus the sum up to where you were. And then you can actually write this down as Qn times T of omega coordinate number k minus coordinate k. So you can see if you look here that after L, you don't change anything. So this is a finite sum. This only goes up to L. For L, you get plus 1. Tau omega is 1, and omega is 0. And all the others, the previous ones, you get minus 1. So that's how you get this one. Okay? Now you define a tower, a sort of normal Capitoni tower. So you write down, what have I done here? I mean, it's not sort of written very well. But I write, wrote down. kind of skyscraper with base omega. The number of floors above each point is exactly phi of x. And then I run up the tower, I walk up until I get to the top. I can't go any further. And then I jump down and go with the adding machine. So that's the dynamic transformation, the dynamic tower. So the adding machine is a goddick, and so will the tower be at work. But we're interested in weak mixing. In fact, you go a bit more. You know that this is boundedly rationally ergodic. So we have, we're building this dynamic tower with growth sequence Q. And then you get that it's rationally ergodic. The return sequence, or the sequence involved, is going to be like 2 to the Cn, where Cn is the inverse function of the QKs, growth sequence. So if I had, uh, I don't know, uh, yeah, if I had Qn to be 4 to the n, something like 4 to the n, then I would get An to be something like root n, for example. Okay, so T is weakly mixing if this G2 group, associated G2 group is 0, and G2 is going to be the collection of guys on the circle, where norm of qn t squared is fine. Norm of x is the minimum distance to an integral. Okay. So I can show that, uh, in fact, uh, if we want to go back, we want to go back, but you directly show that eigenfunctions converge, that the kind of things which would be eigenfunctions are going to converge almost surely, if and only if. Uh, so t is going to be like the eigenvalue. And the eigenfunction associated to T would converge if and only if this sum would be finite. 
So an example of that is that you have QN, what's called the completely non-arithmetic non sequence generated by AN. So QN plus 1 is AN times QN plus 1. And AN is some of the reciprocals, this, uh, the squares of A should be infinite sum. And then you get that uh, zero, so the ratio, so this divided by this, would be tending to zero if I was rationally weakly mixing, but they don't. They're bound in real. So, they, so by choosing the dynamic time properly, then I'm going to get something which is weakly rationally ergodic, like stronger property, spectrally weakly mixing, but it will not be rationally. <coughs> Okay, so there's subsequence. There's also something called subsequence rationally weak mixing. Most of what I said would work if I did things along a subsequence. So, subsequence means that we have some subsequence K, and we call it rationally weakly mixing along K, if the convergence is along K. So, for you define your hereditary ring, a good set. So, a good set will be where this convergence happens to zero, but along the subsequence. Same subsequence each time. So why subsequence? So it is the same again, you get a dense hereditary ring. Everything's true, what we said. <coughs> the example that we had is not subsequence uh, rationally weakly mixing, because the lower bound is along the whole sequence. And we see things when we get the category. So you can talk about measure preserving tra transformation to be subsequence rationally weak mixing if it's rationally weak mixing along some subsequence. So our example is not. You get that subsequence guys are generic. You write it down, and when it's a, uh, if you write it down properly, then you see that the collection of subsequence rationally weak mixing guys is a G delta property. There is an ergodic transformation there, and so therefore it's dense, so it's a dense G delta. I'm talking about measure preserving transformations of the new one. But, rationally weak in mixing transformations, they're a subset of weakly rationally ergodic transformations along the whole sequence, and that is needed. So that's where we are category wise. Okay, thank you for listening. Yeah, there were two preprints. Um, how do I get back to the wall? There are two things on oxy. References. Wait.